Amen. Turning your Bibles to the fourth chapter of Philippians. We continue there <clears throat> with our series. We'll be looking at verses 10 through 14 today. As it moves on in the text here. <clears throat> Being content. The Apostle Paul says in verse 10, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, and now at the last your care, your concern of me hath flourished and revived again, wherein you were also careful. You cared so much, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect or, or regard of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased or to be in need, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. <clears throat> I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, notwithstanding or yet you have well done. You've been so kind to me. That you did communicate, you did share with my trouble, you did share in my affliction. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Over the last two weeks we've looked at two very powerful themes. Overcoming anxiety and maintaining peace. Folks, this is where we live. We need this stuff every day of our lives. We need to be able to overcome anxiety. And you remember... We don't have to be anxious about anything, but everything by prayer. With thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known unto the Lord. We can pray about these things. We don't have to receive this stuff that comes on us and let it get us down and wear us out. We can pray and go to God and thank Him that He's got it and that He has the power and the ability to work it out. And the evidence that we have given it over to Him and we're trusting in Him and thanking Him that He's got it is that He's going to give us peace, supernatural peace, a peace that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. And then we need to maintain that peace. And we maintain that peace by focusing on those things that are edifying, those things that builds us up. And we continue to walk in the truth that we know. He says, practice the things that you have been taught, the things that you have learned. Live in truth. Be obedient. Walk in proper fellowship, and you will maintain that supernatural peace into your life. Now, that's what we've looked at thus far. But then in verse 10, he changes gears just a little bit, and he says, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly now at the last your care has flourished. It has revived again. Although you didn't have the opportunity, but when you did have the opportunity, you ministered to me. Then verse 14, Yet you have well done. You have been so kind to me, and you did share in my affliction. You could read those two verses back to back. And if you didn't know verses 11 and 13 were in there, you would think that they could, you know, it's just, just miss it. And what Paul is doing here is he is inserting between these two things another major theme and another major truth that we need to experience in our life on a daily basis. And what is that? Being content. Those first two things flow right into the third thing. Literally, contentment is peace, the supernatural peace of God, on steroids. It's just bumped up. And it's overflowing in your life, regardless of what's going on on the outside. This can go on on the inside of your life. And you can experience this supernatural peace and contentment in your life. Now, when Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4... That God has made us partakers of His divine nature through Christ. When you get saved, you become partakers of His divine nature in Christ. And you have been given everything that you need for life and godliness. Right here it is. This is what we need every single day in our life. 
These are spiritual disciplines which we need to learn and we need to be exercised by these so that we can experience the blessing of these uh, in our life on a, on a moment-by-moment moment basis sometimes. Amen? Amen? And I want to lay down one other thing before I move on. All of these things are a choice. I can choose to worry or I can choose to pray and not be anxious and let God take care of it. I can choose to worry or I can choose to be at peace. I can choose to maintain that peace. And I can choose to allow that peace to come into contentment in my life and bless me. Or I can be upset and going all over the place just like the world goes. All of these are choices. They are spiritual disciplines that you and I need to perfect in our life. Amen? Amen. All right. Being content. Let's make sure we understand what we're talking about here. Content. Contentment is defined in Webster's. don't usually use uh, uh, humanity to define much, but I'm going to do it this time. Is, it is uh, listed in Webster's as satisfied what one is or has, not wanting more or anything else. And here it comes. Willing or resigned to be content. Amen. Even as humanity looks at this idea of contentment, they see it as a choice. You can choose to be willing or resign yourself to be content to whatever your situation may be from a human level. But what Paul is going to teach us goes way beyond the human level to where we hook up with the supernatural and the spiritual in our lives. Now this word content in verse 11 is defined in Thayer's Greek-English lexicon as sufficient for oneself... Strong enough or possessing enough to need no aid or support. Independent of external circumstances. Here it is. Strong enough or possessing enough within your being that you can be content. Are you strong enough? Do you possess enough? Is Paul talking about pulling himself up by his bootstraps? Is he talking about himself, humanly speaking, be strong, in, strong enough or possessing enough that he can do this, humanly speaking, in human power? No, he's not. The whole thrust of this is verse 13. The reason that he can be strong enough the reason that he can possess enough not to need anything on the outside independent of external circumstances regardless of what they are is I can do all things through Jesus Christ which strengthens me, inner strength and power from within. Man, you choose to walk in obedience and choose to walk in proper fellowship with the Lord. He can provide for your every need regardless of what happens to you on this side. Amen. Amen. You can be content as a believer. Amen. Two very simple things about being content that the Spirit wants me to share with you this morning. Here's the first. <clears throat> Say this with me. Being content is a learned behavior. It's a learned behavior. It's a spiritual discipline that we can learn. And listen to what he says in verse 11 and 12. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be in need and I know how to have plenty. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and overflow and to suffer need. Now as you look at that, there are three things in those two verses that are very obvious. They just jump off the page <clears throat> to you. He says, I have learned, I know how, and I am instructed. What does that say to you? 
He is trying to communicate something to us. So what does it say to you as a believer? Very simply, it says this, that being content is a learned behavior. He says, I've learned how. I know how. I am instructed. But there's something else. I asked Donna that. Sometimes I use Donna as my guinea pig. And I asked her, I said, what does that say to you? What that says to me is, is if Paul can do it, I can do it. Ah, there it is. Right there it is. Paul is saying this to the Philippians, and basically it's this, because the Lord has empowered me to do this, so can you do it. And all these years later, the Lord is saying to us, if Paul can do it, we can do it too. Hallelujah. I don't have to let the things that happen to me in my life tear my life all to pieces. I don't have to go around playing my violin all the time. I don't have to go around wringing my hands and be upset and all like that. I can be content in Christ. I can experience sufficiency in Christ, sufficiency in my life. Paul says, I have learned in whatsoever state. The word state can be translated as circumstances. Or situations which covers about everything. I have learned in whatsoever state, circumstance, situations I am. There with to be content. I have enough. I am strong enough. I have possessed enough in Christ. And I have learned to be content. That word learn means to bring into experience. Mm -hmm. bring into experience. Weast has it, its entrance into a new condition. And what is that new condition? I'm not worried. I'm not upset. I'm not stewed and being stirred. I'm content. That new condition was the state of being content and experiencing sufficiency in Christ's sufficiency in my life. Regardless of what I'm going through. And by the way, he went through a whole lot more than you and I go through. Man, we think we got it bad. Have you ever been scourged five times? Paul was scourged with a cat of nine tail five different times. Five times. He was beaten with rods three times. He was shipwrecked three times. He spent a night and a day in the deep, in the sea, floating around on stuff. Until God rescued him. He had, was arrested in jail numerous times. And as he writes this about being content, where is he? The Bahamas, not on your life. He was in jail in Rome under guard. And he says, I have learned. He also says, I know how. What does he know how? Verse 12, he says, I know how to be abased. I know how to be in need, and I know how to abound. I know how to be low. I know how to be high. I know what it means to be hungry, and I know what it means to be full. I know how to, do, I know how to navigate all of the things that the Lord allows in my life. Him and Job had the same God. The Lord giveth. And the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Regardless, they still praise in God. Just like Floyd, praise God every time you see him. Praise God. He says, I know how. Then he says, I am instructed. He says, everywhere. I think everywhere covers about everywhere, doesn't it? Where was he? Where was his everywhere right now? In prison. <laughs> everywhere. And in all things. I believe that covers most everything, doesn't it? <laughs> whether you're being scourged. Whether you're in stocks in a Philippian jail with Silas. And what were they doing at midnight? Singing praises unto God. And God sent them reinforcements. Sent them an earthquake and shook that place up and let them out. Mercy sakes. 
Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I have learned. I know how. I'm instructed. And who's our greatest instructor, by the way? Two of them. Holy Spirit and this word. The Holy Spirit's given unto us to guide us into all truth. This word instructed in verse 12 is extremely interesting and important. This is why we study words. The King James does not bring this out. The New King James doesn't bring it out. But there is a nuance here that is extremely important to what Paul is saying. This word instructed means to be initiated. To teach fully. What happens when you are taught fully on something? Man, you can grab a hold of it and go. It becomes your experience when you have been taught fully. You ever go through a learning curve on something and once you get the hang of it, you're gone. It becomes a reality in your life. It becomes something that you depend upon. It becomes something that you use. He says, I have been so initiated by the things that the Lord has allowed in my life, that His purpose in my life and all that He is doing, I have fully comprehended that and applying it to my life now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Paul is saying through the things that he suffered, he was initiated into a deeper and more powerful relationship with Jesus. I know we don't like to hear that. But folks we don't learn a whole lot on the mountaintop. It's when we're in the valley. When we're suffering. When we suffer losses. And we go through hardships. Honey we get our focus on the one who can do something for us. Amen. I tried to imagine what it must have been like. About the third or the fourth time that he was scourged. You think he wanted to give up? You think he wanted to give in? You think he might have been a little angry at the Lord? I can't imagine that, folks. Paul had struggles in his life even as he was fulfilling the great commission and the ministry that the Lord had given him. He had a thorn in the flesh that the Lord would not re remove to keep him from getting the spiritual big head and becoming no earthly good. And he prayed to the Lord, said, Lord, would you do something about this? And this is what God said to him, my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength. In the Greek, that word strength is literally power. What do you need when you are suffering? What do you need when you have a great loss? You need supernatural power to encourage you, to empower you, to endure and keep on. He said, God said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Now watch this. This is what Paul is saying. I have been initiated to the point of my experiences and I have found the secret. I have learned the secret. I embrace what the Lord allows into my, in, in my life and I give myself to Him and the next thing I know I've got the power of God all over my life. Empowering me to stand in there and take it for the kingdom of God. When I am weak, He is strong. He's found the secret. The things that He suffered through initiated Him in a deeper and more profound and powerful relationship in Jesus Christ. Woo, hallelujah. And the thing with most of us is get suffering far from me. <laughs> get hardships far from me. Is that reality? 
We live in a sin-cursed world where bad things happen to good people. Bad things happen to innocents, even innocent children. And we have to man up and Christ up and embrace the things that happen to us and allow the power of Christ to make us more like Jesus. These things can make us better and they can make us bitter. You ever heard that thing? I've heard this all my life. Life has the power to make you better or to make you bitter. You ever heard that? I've heard it all my life. Paul's got a different take on that. Christ has the power to make you better. (laughs) When we give ourselves to Him. Listen to me. Contentment. That overflowing peace on steroids, contentment, is a learned behavior. In our weakness, we experience the power of Christ. Paul said, work out what God has worked in. Philippians 2.12 Work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. What he's talking about is working out what God has worked into your life. And that's exactly what he's talking about here. It's a spiritual discipline. Amen. Amen. Samuel's oldest girl, when she was about 18 months old, we lived with him for a while, maybe nine months or a year. And at 18 months, she, she could really motor. You know, most of these little kids, when they get to walking, you know, they really get to going. And at nighttime, they'd put her in this little sleeper, and it had these little vinyl feet on it, and you could hear that little young on the hard floor coming from the other side of the house. She's all over the place. And she loved to come into our room, and our room was carpeted. But between the hard floor and the entrance into the carpeted area, there is a tax strip. How many of you know the experience of the tax strip? You step on that sucker, what will it do? It'll poke you. It don't care if you're an adult or an 18-month-old kid. But here's the thing. Would you believe that that little kid never had to be instructed on how to avoid the tax strip? (laughs) Her mom and her daddy or grandpa and grandma never had to instruct her on how to navigate the tax strip. She just learned how to do it on her own. If an 18-month-old child can learn to uh, navigate issues like that, how come we can't learn to navigate? We can. Don't say, I can't help myself. Say, Lord Jesus, help me. (laughs) Listen to me. Being content, learning to be at peace and experiencing His peace and presence in your life is a learned behavior. Paul says, I have learned, I know how, and I am instructed. And what he did for Paul, he'll do for you if you'll give him half a chance. What are we talking about? We're talking about being content. It's a learned behavior. Here's the second thing. Say it with me. Contentment is an inside job. It's an inside job. Listen to what Paul says in verse 13. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How simple is that? How profound is that? Paul has just said that he has been initiated by all the things that he has gone through in his life, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I've been initiated by all of these things, and I have learned the secret. And what was that secret? I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. It's not me, it's Christ in me. I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This word strengthen means pretty much what you think it means. It means to empower. And what do we need? Much of the time to overcome, we need power. To empower, to enable, to increase in, to strengthen, to be strong, to make strong. He said, my Jesus can do this. I love the Amplified here. It reads, I can do, bringing out more of the nuances here, I can do all things through and in Christ who strengthens and infuses me with inner strength and power. What is that verse telling us? It's telling us that contentment is an inside job. 
takes place in my heart of hearts when I surrender to the Lord and let Him work. Working out what He has worked in. You are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Old things go away. Behold, all things become new. You're not the same dude or dudette you used to be in Christ. You're a spiritual creation with spiritual resources and spiritual power in Christ. Get off the throne and let Christ own the throne and He'll release and you will have the power to navigate all the stuff of your life. It's what he's saying. A parallel truth and a passage to what he is teaching here is what Jesus said in John 15, 5. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same, brings forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Just flip that around. Without Christ you can do nothing, but with Christ you can do everything. I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. Jesus is saying the same thing. If you abide and yield and obey, I will produce my life and my spirit through your life. And you can experience life on a different plane. An abundant life. A life of peace. A life of contentment. And the things that happen to you on the inside of your, on the outside of your life will not change who you are on the inside because your stability and your sufficiency comes from the Christ who lives within. Amen? Amen. My life verse from the Old Testament is, I have set the Lord always before me because He, God, is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. It's the same thing. See, I'm not sufficient in and of myself. I can't pull myself up by myself bootstraps and make it with a lot of the things that comes into my life I've got to have something greater than who I am and that someone is Jesus in that personal relationship I know his voice and I hear his voice and he speaks to me and ministers to me what are we talking about we're talking about being content it's a learned behavior and it's an inside job. Amen? Amen? All right. As believers, to live the best life possible, we must. We've got to be able to overcome anxiety. We've got to be able to maintain the peace that God produces in our life. And we've got to learn to be content. Amen? Amen. All of these are choices in my life. And I can choose to be content. Listen, the enemy of our soul has come to steal, kill, and destroy. What's the rest of that verse say? But my Jesus, hallelujah. My Jesus has come that I might have life and have it more abundantly. That I might be able to overcome anxiety. That I might be able to maintain the peace that he produces. That I might be able to be content. That's the abundant life. That is the best life possible. In Christ. Not out of Christ, but in Christ. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor, well, how, what does that look like? How does that work? Well, all I can do is tell you my experience, okay? <clears throat> in 1998, Dawn and I lost the most valuable possession that we had materialistically, and that was a house. Burned in a fire. Gone overnight. Gone. That situation initiated her and myself into something that we had never experienced before in our life and forced us to trust God in a way and depend upon God in a way that we never had in our lives. And the fruit of that was is we were able to experience a deeper and more profound relationship in Jesus Christ. It was amazing. Would I want to go through it again? No. <laughs> but in that experience, instead of being bitter and being mad and being upset, okay, Lord, what's going on here? Trust me, David. Trust me. I will provide. And he can provide. The house that burned, I still owed a bunch of money on it. The new house I built back, it was built debt free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, God can bless, honey. He can take the things that are awful and terrible and make something good out of it. But if you're going to whine and cry and play your violin every step of the way, that's not going to happen on you. Come on now. We got that man up in Christ and woman up in Christ. 
It produced something different. It initiated us into an experience that we had never experienced before. Then in 2010, our oldest son was killed in a motorcycle accident. And again, we were initiated into a situation that we had never experienced before in our life. We were broken in a way that we had never been broken before and didn't think that we were going to be able to make it. But as we gave ourselves to Him, He proved Himself mighty and strong and He helped us overcome. He helped us put the pieces back together. We came out of that experience in understanding the peace of God in our lives in the middle of the greatest loss we'd ever suffered. We discovered that God's will is much deeper than we ever realized that it could be. We were initiated and we experienced Him in a deeper and more profound way. 2015, we sat beside my mother, both Donna and myself did, and watched my mother slip out and go into eternity. And again, we had to trust him for something different that we had never had to experience. And what did he do? He proved himself mighty and strong and sufficient. In 2020, again, we had something that happened to us. I had what they call a complex migraine and I lost consciousness basically for four days. I didn't even know who I was, where I was, or anything else. I didn't even know who Donna was. Four days out. Came to Thursday morning at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I am in a hospital bed in ICU and both my arms are tied. I've got IVs and leads in both arms. And I've got machines around me with lights flickering and going on. And when my eyes popped open, the initial response was, what in the world is going on? Where am I at? And all of those things to be fearful and be afraid. But before I could cross the threshold of fear and let it grip a hold on me, I cried out to the Lord. And you know what the Lord did? He spoke to me. And He called my name. He said, David. You are okay. He didn't say, you're going to be okay. He said, David, you are okay. And that was it. You see, because I've been initiated by the hardships and the losses and the sufferings of life, I know what my Jesus can do. I know what the Spirit of God can produce in me. And as I gave myself to the Lord, the peace of God just absolutely flooded me in that room. I was still tired, but it didn't matter. I was okay. I still had IVs in my arms, but it was okay because God said it was okay. Everything around me that I could see with my senses and hear with my ears said, you're not okay. But God said that I was okay. And I was okay. And his peace helped me, his power helped me to be content until somebody could come and let me know what had happened. Mm. That's what he has for us. That's what he has for you. God's no respecter of persons. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. We do not have to succumb to worry, fret, upset, sufferings, losses of the greatest kind. Whatever they are, God in Christ is equal to it. And I can do all things through Jesus Christ, which strengthens me. Amen? The Lord's speaking right into your life right now if you'll listen to Him. Don't worry, don't fret, don't be upset. Find yourself a place and get alone with God. Tell Him about all your troubles. Tell Him about what's going on in your life. And begin to pray and begin to thank Him that He can deliver you and see you through it. And I'm not going to tell you that everything's going to turn out like what you want. Because it rarely does. But I am going to tell you He can see you through He can sustain you because we are sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Amen? Amen. Man, don't that just make you want to shout just a little bit? Yeah.
Being content is a very spiritual thing, folk. Amen? And that's your resource. That, that's your destiny. That's God's gift to you in Christ. <laughs> Amen. Let's soak that up and put it into practice in our lives. Let's pray.